Do you know the feeling where you can't find what you're looking for because it's buried under so much stuff? That physical clutter causes mental clutter too, for you and your kids. Luckily, there's another way to live. Welcome to Worldly Families. I'm Justine Janae. Traveling to over 40 countries and living abroad has shown me that the mainstream American way of doing things is not always the best way. I'm all about teaching you new ways of being and doing so you can live and or parent more intentionally and have more fun. With our first baby in 2014, my now husband, Kenny, and I had not much more than a mattress on the floor and a bookshelf in our apartment. It was a simple, happy time. I remember our first shopping trip for baby Autumn, walking down these massive aisles filled with baby gear. I was thinking, what is the difference between a crib, a bassinet, a pack and play, and a sleeper? Kenny said, your face looks like how I feel, and we skedaddled. In one of my favorite parenting books, Parenting Without Borders by Christine Grosslow, she cites a study that found, quote, the average American family gains 30% more possessions with the arrival of each child. 30%? What? Why? Our materialistic culture causes high levels of depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem in kids. Since marketing toward kids was deregulated in the U.S., advertisers rely on pester power to help them sell. For this reason, we stopped letting Autumn watch other people playing with toys on YouTube. In France, parents frustrate their kids on purpose to teach them delayed gratification. And in Japan, where there's not a lot of space per capita, children are given multi-purpose toys like wooden blocks instead of plastic single-purpose toys like fire trucks. Japanese children in restaurants aren't dependent on toys and screens for distractions because having less has made them more patient. A couple months into the pandemic, in an effort to help Autumn through a difficult behavioral phase, we took away all of her plastic toys. The next day, she was building dollhouses out of cardboard, tape, and fabric scraps, truly using her imagination, and her attitude improved as well. As careful as you are, though, with what and how much you buy, there will always be dun-dun-dun gifts. American children get, on average, 70 new toys a year. To combat this, when your kids have birthday parties, ask guests to donate to a preferred charity instead. Another rule you can follow is for every birthday, instead of getting showered with gifts, make sure your special little one gets four total gifts. Something they want, something they need, something to wear, and something to read. That said, beware of the trap of shaming yourself or others for the possessions they have. In Parenting Without Borders, Gross Low writes about how advertising makes us believe that what we possess defines what kinds of parents we are and what kind of kids we're raising. If, heaven forbid, you end up with a plastic toy, relax and let your kid enjoy it. And when they grow tired of it, donate it to someone in need who will cherish it. Ultimately, the more you can declutter your physical space and encourage resourcefulness and imaginative play, the better everyone will feel. Less truly is more. Give it a try. If you're picking up what I'm laying down, please subscribe and drop a comment below letting me know what you plan to do to declutter your space. I'll see you in the next video.